Silverthorne Pulse. I am Kim Jardim. I am the Public Information Officer for the Town of Silverthorne, and I have a very special guest here with me today. His name is Andrew McClure, and he is from the Tunnel to Towers Foundation. So, Andrew, can you tell me um, a, a little bit about the Tunnel to Towers Foundation, how long it has been in existence, and how it came to be? Thank you, Kim. The Stephen Siller Tunnel to Towers Foundation um, is one of the few 9-11 foundations still in existence. We were born on 9-11. Stephen Siller was a New York City firefighter who gave up his life while saving others in what is the biggest rescue effort in U.S. Mm. history. Wow. So. There are, sh I'm sure, l some people out there that don't know what the Tunnel to Towers Foundation does for folks. Can you tell us what the mission of the foundation is and what they do for people? Sure. Well, when we got started, it was all about doing good for others, doing, doing right by families in need, doing uh, burn victims, whatever it was. And we have grown to a point where uh, we've been able to um, broaden our mission and not only do we um, serve catastrophically injured service members, which we're going to talk about a little bit later on, uh, we're building homes for um, Gold Star families, so mm -hmm. spouses and children who have lost a dad and their uh, a husband in the war, and also paying off mortgages on the homes of first responders who have wow. uh, lost their lives in the line of duty. Wow, that is so incredible. Uh, I know that recently your foundation participated in helping a family in the Denver area. Um, sadly, Summit Fire and EMS, our local firefighting unit here, lost uh, an individual named Ken Jones. And uh, I understand that your foundation was able to step in and buy out the mortgage for that family's home, and they now have a mortgage-free home. So we are going to be the first one to reach out for the most part. And we reached out to his wife, Carrie, and um, we let him know that this is one burden that she's not going to have to worry about. Hmm. So the mortgage is paid off. Wow, that is so special. So can you, I'm so excited because I know you're here to talk about something that's happening locally in our community, in Silverthorne specifically. Can you tell us why you're here? Well, on February 15th, we are going to be presenting Brandon Adam, an Army Sergeant, his wife Shannon, and their children, uh, Elena and Rory, with a mortgage-free home in Silverthorne. Wow. And it's been a project that's been ongoing for about three years. Um, just getting the land was a, a task. And uh, this, is, this is a real special family. Wow. So can you tell us a little bit about how this process works? How you uh, find families and determine that they need assistance and are able to help them? Are you reaching out to them? Are they reaching out to you? Um, how does that process work? When, when we got started, uh, the embryonic stage of all of this, um, it was more word of mouth and uh, we were reaching out to um, catastrophically injured service members that we had either read about or we visited at Walter Reed. Now we've grown to the point where our application process is uh, kind of takes care of that and we have a very long list of um, needy service members, um, service members who deserve this gift, uh, but it is not a list that you want to be on. A minimum criteria to get a mortgage-free home from our foundation is that minimum is double amputation above the knees, and that's what, what Brandon is. Right. So, can you tell me what the um, what the process is like once once you've decided on a family that you're going to assist and and the construction of the home begins and. So tell me some of the, the fun parts of this whole process for you. And it's my understanding, for example, that the family is not to see the home until the actual reveal, the actual dedication. Is that correct? That's correct. And then what's the day like for the dedication? Sure. Now, usually the home recipient will, will take a peek. He'll drive around the corner and he'll want to see it. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a big deal. It's his forever home. Brandon has not seen this home. And he has been um, as 
patient as any human being could possibly be because wow. he's eager. It's a long time coming. And um, yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting day. So um, come Saturday, February 15th, we're going to uh, hold a ceremony. We have guests from all over the country, from our major sponsors, the Home Depot, General Motors, Carpet One, uh, Semprify, you name it. We've got uh, anybody who was involved with this home build is invited to speak at this mm -hmm. event. And we, the last speaker, of course, is Brandon, and he will address the, uh, the audience, and we expect a huge turnout. And um, the, uh, the moment when he get, enters that home, it's just him, Shannon, and the girls. Nobody else is walking in behind him, and uh, it's about as special as a moment you'll ever see. I can only imagine. I am so excited for this event. I uh, can't wait to be there uh, and be a part of that and welcome them to our community. Can you tell us a little bit about Brandon and his family? Who is Brandon, and, and who are the members of his family? All right, so, Br so Brandon was originally from Sands Point, Sands Point, Idaho. Um, very, very active, very competitive growing up, soccer, uh, all types of sports. He, he rode motocross, um, skiing, and his wife Shannon's very similar. She's a skier. Uh, I believe she's originally from Colorado. They currently live in Woodland Park. Mm -hmm. And they have two daughters who have been on skis since their 12 months. Wow. So very active family. Brandon has not let his injuries, and he's a double amputee, very high up on his thighs. He has not let these injuries define him. He's been a silver medalist in the X Games on mono skiing, wow. and he's, he's one of the top sled hockey players in the country. Wow. So inspirational. I mean, and so uh, obviously, beneficiaries of your foundation get to choose where they would like to live. And uh, he chose Silverthorne, which we are so thrilled about. Um, is that correct, that uh, beneficiaries can choose where they would like to be, where would, they want to call home? I would home? say to a, a community um, like Silverthorne, that's probably the most exciting thing that I can uh, pass along. We give the families a budget to work with them. Now these are smart homes, so they're, they're expensive homes. Smart homes have every possible feature from uh, automatic, everything's automated, the doors mm -hmm. open automatically, his kitchen, uh, the range will lower so he can cook. Um, wow. Everything is designed for him. The blinds work, are automated, the, um, the security system, the, um, uh, his um, his music, his his television, right. entertainment system, everything is automated. He can work everything off an iPad. So, yes, we, we give him the opportunity to live anywhere they want in the United States, and he chose Silverthorne, and he's wanted to live here for a long time. That's great. We are we're so honored, and we can't well wait to welcome him and his family to our community. Um, please, you, the public is welcome. Public to is welcome this dedication. It is February 15th. It will begin at the Elks Lodge on the Blue, uh, Blue River Parkway in Silverthorne. And then the procession will proceed to the home, which is at the base of the Three Peaks neighborhood nearby. So please, please come out and join us. Uh, let's welcome Brandon and his family to Silverthorne. We're just honored that they're uh, going to call Silverthorne home. So thank you everyone for being with us today and we'll see you next time on the Silverthorne Pulse.